Hello, everyone, and welcome to day five of the five day Christmas short story challenge. I'm so excited for all of you who have followed us through the challenge. We are going to be writing your solution and your ending. And we're going to be reading two really fun short stories, a robot Christmas and an August Christmas tale. I'm going to be joined later uh, by Jasmine to read her story, an August Christmas tale. I'm looking forward to that. So if you guys are joining me live, go ahead and comment live and tell me where you're joining us from. And if you're watching the replay, be sure to comment replay. I really look forward to reading all of your stories. If you are ready to submit your story, just send it to contact us at storyquestacademy.com. That will give you a chance to be able to win one of two scholarships, a reading journal, digital download, and a chance to be published in next year's Christmas challenge. That means that I would be reading your story to everyone for the Christmas challenge. So I'm really excited to see what kind of neat stories you guys are working up uh, based on the different prompts or something of your own invention. So I would love to hear what prompt you picked and what kind of story that you are working on. What is the setting or the genre? So we're going to be talking about the solution. Yesterday we talked about adding an obstacle to your story, a big problem that your character has to overcome in order for them to accomplish their goal. Whether that is getting Christmas presents to a small town in Alaska, or that is getting home in time for Christmas. There has to be some sort of obstacle that is in the way for, uh, for them to be able to accomplish their goal. So. If you get stuck, a really great way to be able to come up with a solution is to actually think about how you would solve the problem or even ask a friend what they would do. For example, if there's a tree in the middle of the road, do you think that you should park the car and walk around? Should you go and find a neighbor that would help you to be able to move the tree out of the way? Should you try to drive over the tree and create a ramp? There is several different ways that you can be able to solve the obstacle. In The Gift of the Magi, Della sells her hair in order to make enough money to buy a gift for Jim and buy him a chain for his precious watch. That is her solution to her obstacle that she only had a dollar and 82 cents to be able to spend. In The Little Pecola, Pecola puts her little wooden shoes by the chimney and Santa brings her a baby chimney bird. So if you are finishing your story, you're going to need lots of inspiration. And that means getting inspired by music. And I have two Christmas playlists for you to enjoy. I have a classic Christmas playlist and an instrumental Christmas playlist. If you have signed up for the challenge, you will have received an email with this, with the links to both of those playlists to be able to be inspired to finish writing your solution. Let's talk about the end of your story. There are three different types of endings. A lot of people think there's only one kind of ending, but there's actually three. So success is the most typical ending. Happily ever after. They succeed. They overcome the obstacle. They succeed in their original goal. This is especially good for short stories that are really small. Failure. This means that the character fails in their original goal, but they learn an important lesson that makes them a better person. And a better result is an interesting twist ending where the character fails in their original goal. Maybe they don't get in time home time for Christmas, but end up with something that's even better than they expected. So maybe they don't get in home in time for Christmas, but they spend Christmas at the inn nearby where the tree had fell down and they end up finding out that their family was going to see them. And so they end up being able to have Christmas with their family and the really nice neighbors that help them out of the snow. So. Think about whether you want to have success, learn a lesson, or you want to have a twist ending. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read our first short story. That is Christmas for a Robot Detective. This is written by Nathaniel James. He's one of the instructors at StoryQuest Academy. It was the night of Christmas in the year of 9040. And all the citizens of Los Angeles were full of ho holiday cheer, all but one robot detective named Rigel. 
Rigel dug his metal fingers into the pockets of his long trench coat, breathed a sigh into the high collar covering his mouth. A cloud of steam drifted from it into the night sky. He was trying to keep his thermal temperature at a stable level, but the current climate conditions made it difficult. You, Crumb Dome, said a man dressed in elf costume. Say you will use some holiday cheer. Here, have a free Christmas hat. I already have a hat, Sonny. Rigel chipped the fedora in his, on his head. Now get lost before I find out you've done something illegal. Rigel flashed his police badge. Whatever, Chrome Dome. The man turned away and left. The young voice called from a nearby alley. Hey, that's no way to treat a Christmas elf. The boy was only a few feet tall with raggedy clothes and a missing tooth. You're just a Christmas Grinch. Listen, kiddo, that wasn't a real elf. It was... Rigel stopped and switched gears. Hey, shouldn't you be at home with your parents? But my parents aren't home, and even if they were, we have no money for firewood, turkey dinner, or any presents. What do you mean your parents aren't home? What happened to them? I don't know. I just woke up and they were all gone. The boy grabbed under Rigel's arms and began to sob. I just want my parents and Christmas back. Young whippersnappers, Rigel thought to himself. But Rigel was no regular robot. He was a robot detective and would not let a person down in need. What's your name, kid? Brendan, the kid sniffled. Fine, Brendan. Let's get you home and solve this mystery. When Rigel had arrived at the boy's home, he began to survey the scene and search for clues. Everything is how I left it, said Brendan. Wait, this firewood here wasn't here when I left. Rigel opened the freezer and spotted another clue. You said you had no money for a turkey? That's right. Someone must have snuck in here while you were gone. Rigel sat down to stroke his chin, the kid sitting beside him and mimicking his movements. So your parents mysteriously disappeared this morning while you were gone. Someone secretly gifted you with a turkey and some firewood? And you didn't alter the scene at all since they left, did you? Well, I did clean my room in the morning, but that's it. Wait, what did you change? Well, there were some papers on the floor that I threw away. Papers, Rigel stood. You might be onto something, Sonny. Rigel and Brendan searched the bedroom for clues for several moments. Aha! Uh -huh. Rigel retrieved a piece of paper from a trash bin. Ahem. <clears throat> Dear Brandon, I have left you shopping and errands. We don't have any money for presents. Shh, shh, listen, Rigel continued. Your father's been working extra long shifts and is coming home with enough money for a full Christmas. Signed, your mother. Both Rigel and the boy locked eyes. Then the doorbell rang. It must be his parents. Brendan explained to them how the robot detective helped him home safely and solved the case of his missing parents. Brendan's parents thanked Rigel profusely, calling him a Christmas miracle and the best robot detective they'd ever met. After the commotion was over, Rigel sat at the door. Thank you, fellas, but I really ought to get going. What about Christmas? asked the boy. The best Christmas to me is another job well done. Rigel tipped his fedora, then turned back away into the cold streets of L.A. and began to whistle himself a merry tune. Hi, thank you for joining us. It's nice to see you, Chelsea. So what kind of Christmas story are you writing? Hello, Jasmine. Thanks for joining. Hello, everyone. Awesome. Thank you for having me today. It's really fun. All right. So Jasmine is going to read an August Christmas tale. She is also one of the instructors behind StoryQuest Academy. She offers her expertise on uh, web comics and art. So she has, does a lot of the art lessons that are included in StoryQuest Academy. And I wrote this story using the prompt that is included that was the one Amelia mentioned about finding a family to spend Christmas with. Okay. August hit the alarm clock, turning it off. He got out of bed. The universe is mocking me today. Just because I'm staying in for Christmas Eve doesn't make me pathetic. Unlike some people, I just don't have a family to enjoy it with. August reached his small bathroom. Where's my toothbrush? After multiple minutes of searching, he found it on his small desk. Okay, maybe I should go out and do something today. There's gotta be some sort of parade downtown. Just as I thought, August eyed the elaborate Christmas Eve parade as he locked his bike into one of the designated spots. Nice and Christmas cheer will be good. He had only started to walk towards the growing crowd when a group of teenagers ran past, pushing August over into the cold slush on the road. Hey, watch it! The kids laughed as they continued on to the crowd. August was so distracted that he didn't notice the parade car coming towards him until almost too late. He rolled out of the way just in time to hit into a group on foot. What the heck? One of the paraders jumped out of the way. What's a homeless guy doing here? <laughs> August struggled to his feet. Hey, I'm not a homeless guy. 
Get out of the way! A car honked at him. Hey, homeless dude, I'm talking to you. August ran to the other side of the street. He looked down at his clothes, wet and ruined. Ugh, maybe this was a bad idea. August was almost pushed back into the road when a strong hand grabbed him and pulled him onto the sidewalk. You all right, son? The man who had pulled him off the road kept his hand on August's shoulder. You took quite a tumble earlier. Yeah, I'm uh, fine. <laughs> August tried to swipe the mud off his coat. I guess the universe has decided I spend my Christmas at my apartment this year. Don't you have a family to celebrate with? The man started moving through the crowd, his hand still clamped to August's shoulder. No, I... His voice faltered. They aren't here anymore. The man shook his head. You gotta have someone to spend Christmas with. I'm not from around here. Well, I'm from... Well, doesn't exist anymore. August trailed off. Oh my, the man sighed. How long have you been here? This dimension, I mean. Only a couple months. Not enough time to make friends willing to let me come over for Christmas. August chuckled lightly. <laughs> not like they'd want me over even if they knew me. The man stopped. Poor guy. Bertha. <laughs> over here, a woman called from a few steps over. Where did you wander off to, Paul? <laughs> I saved this here young man. Remember the guy that almost got run over? Oh, you poor thing. Bertha gasped and grabbed a blanket. You must be freezing. Here, take off that filthy coat and wrap this around you. It'll keep you warm. August complied and let him lead them. Let them lead him to an empty chair. Now, why is a young man like you alone on Christmas? Don't you have a family in your Bertha had her hands on her hips. Honey, his dimension was one of them, you know. Paul gave her a look. Oh, Bertha sat beside him. Well, if you've got no one to spend Christmas with, why don't you spend it with us? I'm sure the kids won't mind. The children seated behind him agreed. Oh, I can't. August looked between them. I couldn't intrude in that way. Nonsense, Paul huffed. You wouldn't be intruding at all. I, well, August paused and considered it. Well, I guess it didn't hurt to stop by. It's agreed. Bertha wrote a note and handed it to him. Here's our address. Dinner's at five. Don't be late. Beep, beep, beep. August groaned and turned over in his bed. Yesterday had been rough. Still, he glanced at the note lying on his desk across the room. It wasn't all bad. He got out of his bed and turned off the alarm. The only one thing left to do. Buy gifts for the Knight's family. After eating breakfast, he headed out toward the mall with high hopes. August made it to the mall and broke into a run when he saw a man closing the toy store. Wait! Sorry, we're closing. I just got one thing to get, August pleaded. I'll be just a minute, I swear. Well, it is Christmas, the man shrugged. It won't hurt to let you go in for just a minute. Thanks! August ran to the shell... August ran into the kids' toy store and grabbed a few t cheap toys off the shelves. How many kids did they have again? Four? He bought five toys, just in case. We got gifts for the kids. What did he get for Bertha and Paul? He was looking at some scented candles when he heard a crash coming from the department store next to the one he was shopping in. What was that? The store clerk shrugged. Eh, probably someone broke some merchandise. I don't think so. August ducked into the store the sound came from. A low voice spoke. You idiot! The whole mall probably heard that. A quieter, squeaky voice. Come on, man. We're going to take him hostage anyway. What's the matter if they hear us? The man with a low voice sighed. All right, let's get this show on the road. Mick, Jones, secure the building and bring all the people into one of the shops. Mick, keep them secure. Me and Jones will get all the expensive stuff. Then we'll head out. Just get those hostages. And don't forget, we want the managers to open the cases. So don't break them. August turned and ran towards the bathrooms. He could hide in there. Bang, bang, bang. He had just made it into the bathrooms when the first robber fired three shots into the air. He heard the man yelling, Listen up, folks. We don't want no trouble, so just come on out and sit on the floor in the candle store. Nice and easy. Empty your pockets on the way. August heard a commotion outside the bathroom. Someone was coming. He turned off the lights and ran into the last stall. He could see the man's shadow as he entered the almost empty room. The man pushed the first stall open. No one. He tried the second. Nothing. The man was coming towards him, opening each stall and checking. There was only one way out. The man reached his stall, opening it and looking inside. Hmm. Go sworn I saw someone come in. August watched the man turn and leave through the opening in the air ducts. 
Whew, that was close. He made his way through the air ducts all the way down to where the hostages were being kept. He looked through the opening and saw only one guard was on duty. He crawled back to the bathroom vent and lowered himself onto the ground. Ugh, no one cleans these things. <laughs> he wiped dust off his coat. That's two coats ruined in two days. Perfect. August made his way to the electronic store, crouching low. He found a display radio that was plugged in and switched it to the Christmas radio. Turning on Got the knob all the way, music. he turned it on. August smiled as Christmas music blared from the large radio. He ran behind cover and waited. As he expected, one of the robbers came running, his weapon ready. As he reached the radio, August jumped from his hiding place and tackled him. A quick punch knocked the man out. One down, two to go. He took the man's weapon and hid it in a cleaning closet on his way to the next part of his plan. Sooner or later, they had to check on their friend. After a few minutes, one of the robbers came into view, holding a personal radio and talking to it. Yeah, boss, I found Jones knocked out by the tech store. He paused. You know, I know, I'm looking for the dude right now. He put away the radio and started to search the area. August threw the ornaments in his hand, watching them shatter in front of the trees on display. The robber jumped and ran in the direction of the noise. What the? He didn't have time to finish the sentence as August pushed the Christmas trees on top of him. Ugh! August took his weapon and radio. One last robber to take out. The leader shouted over the radio. What in the world is going on? August turned on the radio as he picked up the last item he needed. Do you want to find Mick and Jones? Meet me in the toy store in five minutes. Don't be late. Speaking of late, he glanced at the large clock in the mall. It was 4.50 p.m. He was going to be late to Christmas dinner. By the time the last robber came into the toy store, August had opened it and set his trap. Hiding behind one of the aisles, he waited. As soon as the man walked into the store, he tripped on the Christmas light August had strung along the floor, and August turned on the strobe lights he had thrown on the aisles, temporarily blinding the man with sudden light. August jumped from his hiding spot and punched the man once. He hit the ground and dropped his weapon. August tied all three robbers up with tinsel and Christmas lights, leaving them for the police to find. It took August almost ten minutes to find the right house. He arrived exhausted, covered in dust and grime from the fight at the mall. Bertha opened the door and gasped, Oh my, what happened to you? I'm sorry I'm late. I tried to get here in time. Some guys tried to rob the mall and they couldn't get any gifts for you. Come inside and warm up. You can take a shower and borrow some clothes so you don't have to wear those. Bertha opened the door wider to let him in. Maybe I should go, August took a step back. It's not fair for you to go out of your way for me, especially when I don't have any gifts for you. Oh, you don't worry about that, young man. Paul appeared at the door. Christmas is about love and family. The gift you give to us is your friendship, and that is enough. Come on in. Dinner is almost ready. August smiled and stepped inside the warm home. Thank you. Merry Christmas. The end. I love that story. That one is so Thank much you. fun. Yeah, so it's my take on a, a, on a diehard, on a diehard Merry Christmas, but no. <laughs> so in this story, we have multiple obstacles that they have to um, overcome. So the main obstacle is that the bad guys, which is the, are coming to rob the mall when he's trying to get presents. And your ending is a different, is a twist ending. So he fails in his original goal to get them gifts, but he has a better than success ending. So I think that that was a really fun story. And thank you for joining us. Uh, if you thank guys you. watch the replay, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link to the playlist. The video will be uploaded really soon. And if you haven't already signed up for the Christmas challenge, uh, I will go ahead and drop a link to that. All the resources are available for free. And you have a chance to be able to win one of our awesome prizes. So here's a link to the playlist, and I'll grab the link to the challenge. And the Christmas challenge is just so much fun to do. It just really is. And I had a lot of fun writing this and collaborating. And, you know, Amelia is such a good writer and such a good mentor for writing. It just is so much fun to help her and to have her there. And it's just a blast to be part of. And I can't wait to write my Christmas story this year. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for joining me today. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you.